Today we're going to be looking at a photo I recently took of the horse at Nebula with this little guy. So as you can see, it's a reflector, meaning it has a bunch of uh, mirrors that reflect light. Uh, this is a Riccardi Honda's design telescope, and it is um, a very fast telescope. It is an astrograph. It is 600 millimeters focal length at three. So it is very good at capturing light fast. And um, it comes with issues because of these mirrors. As you can see, when I move them around, if any stray light goes in them, it will cause weird artifacts. We'll take a look at that and we'll see what, how much damage they can do. This telescope is an excellent little, little uh, device. It works really well. It's not as easy to balance, but it is uh, one of the best astrographs you can find. The camera is on the back. Can't really see it but i'll try to rotate it and show you the camera's back here this is the filter wheel with all the filters this is the focuser and this little guy is the auto guider um it makes sure that the stars are round so why do i use this because it's fast it has a large primary mirror of eight inches that would be the equivalent of an eight inch refractor which is crazy long heavy and very, very, very expensive. But this does an amazing job. It's one of the best telescopes on the market. It is made by an Italian company called Officina Stellare. They are truly uh, some of the best telescope manufacturers around. You can find these ones used uh, quite often because people uh, struggle to collimate them and get them to work. So you never know, you might actually find a great deal and um, pick one of these up. If you have questions, let me know. This took a while to get working, almost a year before I had really good images, but once I got it working, it is a stunning little telescope. So let's get into PixInsight and let's see what the images are. So let's take a look at the data. Let's see what those ugly looking artifacts look like. And did I produce a decent image? Now this is located in the Orion constellation. You can see it in the night sky. One of the stars in this image is actually visible with a naked eye and it's called Alinatak. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's pretty bright and it's a very annoying little star for astrophotographers who have to deal with its uh, power and the artifacts and problems that come with it. Um, the star I'm talking about is this one. This is Alinatak. It is above the flame nebula to the left of the horse head. Now, in hydrogen, um, Everything is fine. Hydrogen is one of the easiest frequencies to work with. The data looks beautiful. There are no reflections. Uh, the stars are nice and round. The dust is present and beautiful. But the moment we move away from hydrogen and we look at sulfur, we get a big donut. This is a reflection off a light source. It could be off Alinatak, it could be off Sirius, which is a, the brightest uh, star in the night sky. I don't know if it's... Uh, one or the two. I'm sure it's not off Alin attack because it's in the frame, but I'm pretty sure this is coming from uh, Sirius or one of my neighbor's bright lights. It is present in all my frames, so I assume it is a star. Uh, this is sulfur. It is still beautiful, relatively clean, somewhat noisy, but we don't need to worry about the noise as you guys saw. Now, oxygen looks like oxygen always does, like shit. It's noisy. Uh, it does show a little bit of the horse head, as you can see in here, um, and it's it's workable. I, I cannot complain, but my biggest issue with this was this, this massive donut. As you can see, it's actually a little bit shifted between oxygen and sulfur. That gives me an idea that it's a star, and that's why the band, band pass, so the colors are slightly passed, because oxygen would see this limb different than sulfur. The image is still really impressive. I've imaged this with long focal length telescope and I always have to struggle with what's happening in here, but let's see how it looks like stacked. So I did a simple stack. You're red for sulfur, green for hydrogen, blue for oxygen, and you can see that you have a massive donut in here. It's frustrating, it's annoying, but maybe it will go away. This is where deconvolution did not work. And as I'm showing here, because of either star size or alien attack itself, the algorithm could not work and 
deconvolution did not go through, that doesn't mean that uh, the image is going to be bad. It just means that the stars will be hard to uh, pull back. The star artifacts and the, the flares around them are going to be hard to manage. But let's see if I can do a good job with that. After I stacked it and did not deconvolute this specific, uh, specific image, I removed the green to prepare it for the standard golden a Hubble telescope palette. Now, immediately I did what I always do. I stretched it. I did a little bit of dynamic range to pull the clouds. And then I did a starless image. Now, this starless image is already fixed. You see the donuts not here. Uh, the way I do this is I use uh, a little script called Star Exterminator by Russell Croman, one of the best uh, astrophotographers around. And I, after I removed the stars, I kind of cleaned up in Photoshop where I use a couple of things to, to remove the spots that are left, including an attack and some other issues that were around here. And I also used it to remove that big donut, successfully as I might say. So I went from this, star, starred image, removed the stars, um, did a curve enhancement, did some HDR transformations, and then in Photoshop I started cleaning uh, the artifacts that come from a fast reflector, from bright stars, and all the other stuff that you get living in a Portal 7, not far from San Francisco. So I wasn't really happy with this as it stands. It is a beautiful image. It does show the rich oxygen that you can't really see in the stack. It does show the immense amount of hydrogen in that area, but we all seen that uh, if we look at some of these images. But I then added the stars back in. The image wasn't bad, but I could not successfully get the massive star on an attack to look good or show up properly. So I decided this is the time for a starless image because the stars are almost impossible to get right. I'm sure somebody like Adam Block or some specialist in PixInsight would have done this with their eyes closed, but I'm not that person. So what did I do? I went back to the golden tone and then I decided to shift the colors a little bit to get it to be more reddish, which is my signature style. I like to push the oranges and the yellows a little bit towards red because the space is kind of reddish. I kind of ended up with the image on the left. It wasn't noise reduced yet. It was relatively good. I started to like it more and more, but then I took it a little bit further. So I, by mistake, clicked on another stretch preview and then it started to look a lot more uh, unique and the contrast and, and the way this image aesthetically looked kind of made me fall in love with it. So I decided this would be the image and I'm again, I'm really happy with it. I cleaned up the stars, I cleaned up the donuts. That little telescope did its job. This is only 15 hours worth of data for a relatively bright object, but the cloud definition does not come that fast. It usually comes after maybe 10 hours. This is five hours per channel, and then I exposed each individual image for five minutes or 300 seconds with a mono camera. Again, I'm really happy. It's probably the best image I've taken of the horse head, and I've taken a few. And I'm actually happy with the way it turned out, the way it looks, um, and it does represent my style of astrophotography. Now, I would wish I could take one with the stars, but the stars themselves present certain limitations when it comes to the, the way they can be processed. Now, if you like this image, if you have questions, I am planning to do a more in-depth uh, video on how I capture my targets, how I plan my targets, how I survey the sky to understand what I'm imaging next based on my telescope and camera. I'll do a more in-depth video of that. But for now, this is why astrophotographers sometimes choose to do starless images because the stars can be less attractive or less uh, aesthetically pleasing. It's not my first choice, but it is something that I really like. Again, if you have comments or if you want to subscribe and send me a message, 
I'm around. Thank you and have a nice day.